Hello and welcome, everyone. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. You're listening to My Strategy, and we're on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, very happy to be here today and glad that you could join us. Uh, Saturday is a great day for us to reflect. It's the day of the week that I choose to really think about my strategy. But keep in mind that any day is a day that you can start thinking about your strategy. As I said, you're listening to my strategy, and our show is growing. We're now available on iHeart, iTunes, Player FM, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and many more of the digital platforms. So if you'd like to hear past episodes or re-listen to this episode, you can go there. You can also find us on many of the social media platforms. Find me at Hawkins John, that's on Twitter, or you can go to johnmhawkins.com. And just like anything in life, we need to have a strategy and a plan to help us reach our goals because the best laid plans don't always work. Now this week we're going to be talking about transformation, both in a personal and business aspect from those two aspects. So this week I'm looking for your stories on transformation. Do you have any good examples or ticks, tips or tricks that you could send to us? If you send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com, you can be entered into our weekly giveaway. All right, so this week we're talking about transformation, the keys to a successful transformation. We're going to talk about why transformation is important, the reason it's hard, why transformations fail. I'm also going to share some tips to help you develop a plan for a successful transformation. So today we're going to be talking about why do we want to transform? What is transformation all about? The definition of it. We're going to talk about going from the current state to the future state. Also talk a little bit about what it's going to take to accomplish that, not only from a personal perspective, which is what this show is all about, personal development, but also from a leadership perspective. If you are going to be doing a transformational initiative at your organization or place of business. We're then going to talk a little bit about why transformation is so hard. And I'm going to use a topic I hope that many of you can relate to. It's maintaining a healthy weight. And I'm not just talking about maintaining the healthy weight, but really transforming, transformational change, going from one state to another. We're going to talk a little bit about what I mean by transformation. We're going to talk a little bit about why transformations fail. Not the amount of proper amount of sponsorship, planning, timelines, poor planning, things like that. We'll then talk a little bit about the five must-dos for transformation. Find your why, get guidance, leave your comfort zone, and more. Then we're going to talk a little bit about how you can pull all of this together and build a strategy around transformation. So why do we transform? Well, let's look at the definition here of transformation. Transformation is a thorough or dramatic change in form or appearance. So a thorough or dramatic change in form or a appearance. Not a subtle change in appearance, but a thorough or dramatic its landscape has undergone a radical transformation. Some of the synonyms are change, alteration, modification, variation, con conversion, revision, amendment, metamorphosis, transfiguration, evolution, mutation, sea change, and more. I think I like the metamorphosis example here. because It says here that a metamorphosis during the life cycle of an animal so think about when a little humble caterpillar goes into their cocoon and comes out as a beautiful butterfly. Well, that's transformation. So why transformation? Why now? I've got an article here by Terry Wallen. She talks about business transformation. She says, in today's thriving marketplace, doing business as usual isn't going to work as a strategy against your competitors. And while most leaders acknowledge this in one form or another, businesses as, business as usual continues. But why is that? Why don't more organizations embrace transformation and incorporate ongoing transformation into their culture? Simply put, it doesn't happen until the leader understands transformation. Is transformation requires a purposeful and the tenacity of the leader 
until the desired culture is realized. Say that again. Transformation requires purposefulness and tenacity of the leader until the culture is realized. She also suggests that transformation does take time. In her case, she says it takes about 18 to 24 months or longer. And these transformational leaders must be focused and take the needed time to think ahead to what can be that what can be to develop that future vision, that future state that we talk a lot about. And that transformational leader must create a compelling vision that will drive the organization to, inco- uh, to accomplish these incredible goals and outcomes. Transformation can also be hard. It is hard. She's got an interesting point here where she starts talking about the perception of transformation. She said some people perceive transformation to be interchangeable with plain old change. And while transformation is not change, not all change is transformational. That's an important point. You can do change. Some change is good, some change is bad, but change by itself does not equate to transformation. Too much change can actually lead to chaos, which isn't good either. She says here, transformation, which is the process of dramatically moving from a current state to a new and completely different one, has never been more needed. What often happens is practice and organizations can introduce changes with limited long-term follow-up and leadership oversight. With this practice, it is unlikely to sustain change, much, much less favorable results over time, with much less favorable results over time. Most people become fatigued with constant changes that seem to tie to nothing at all. More often than not, there isn't a vision or a grand plan, just a popular idea for change. This doesn't work if you wish to have transformational organization that is poised to move quickly and adopt change. She brings up some interesting points here. Talks about the vision, and that's something we talk a lot about on this show, is developing a vision, developing the goals really putting together a vivid view, a vivid description of where we want to go. That's true with regard to transformation as well. She said there's many drivers mandating the need for organizations to transform. The technology is quickly forcing leaders to think differently about the work within their organization. And also that's true with regard to personal development and personal change. Technology is influencing our daily lives, and it is forcing us to change. And this change is happening so quickly that we are actually transforming how we do our daily life. It is a strong driver for transformation, she says. She's referring to the technology. And like it or not, technology is here to stay. It's global and incredible tool. If leaders can dare to be creative in using their technology... You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Well, when we come back, we're going to go through 10 reasons why transformation is so difficult. We'll be right back.
Hello and welcome back, everyone. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. You're listening to My Strategy, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Very happy to be here with you today. Today we're talking all about the keys to a successful transformation. We'd love to get your thoughts. Uh, so if you'd like to uh, call our studio number, it's 866-451-1451. That's 866-451-1451. And we're going to be getting to calls later in the show. So if you can hold off till then, that would be great. Or you can send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. And every week we do give away a, a giveaway. Uh, this week it is a copy of my most recent copy of my book, Coach to Greatness. Uh, and you're also going to get a $25 Visa gift card. So get those emails in to talk at johnmhawkins.com. You can give us a tip or a trick or if you like, uh, just say hi, and that will work as well. All right, so right before the break, we were talking about transformation. We were talking about why do we transform current state to future state, understanding a little bit about you know what transformation is and what it isn't. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about 10 reasons why transformation is so hard. On the show, we do talk about personal development, but personal development also influences our business lives, whether we work for an employer or whether we have our own small business. So I'm going to bring in a topic to help emphasize what a transformation is all about. And so this is just to give us something to, comparison to compare it to. Now, whether you're trying to do a business change or a personal change, I think there are a lot of similarities there. I've got an article here by Paige Wagner, and it's 10 reason why it is so hard to lose weight. So how does weight loss deal with transformation? Well, if you think about it, weight loss, maintaining a weight is fairly straightforward and easy. You know, over time, you can uh, get things out of hand, but doing a transformational weight loss where you lose 25, 30, 40, 50 pounds is transformation. You are going from a current state to the new state, and that is hard. It is not easy. And in going through these top 10 steps, I hope to make some comparisons to what we need to do for transformation in general. So it says if you struggle with weight loss, you know that there are no shortcuts. The concept remains simple. Burn more calories than you eat. And easy as that, right? Usually isn't. It's not just about finding the time to exercise, choosing the salad over a burger. It's about making a genuine commitment to health every day, regardless of your ups and downs. So number one she's got here is your attitude. You're only on a health kick to lose weight or look a certain way. It will be hard to lose weight. So here she suggests that not only must you have your goal in mind, but you also must to have this have must you must also start with the right attitude. And I would say that's a positive attitude, but also realistic. You know, go into it with the right sentiment, the right thoughts, the right actions, because it is going to be hard. You will need resilience. So that's number one. She then says that you should journal and track your progress as you go through your journey. And this will help you with motivation. And I strongly suggest documenting what you are doing, both in the business world or in the personal world. It is one of the greatest ways that you can help achieve your goals if you choose to. Uh, the reason is that it gives you the ability to kind of connect the dots between disparate thoughts that you may be having. So if you're able to document and capture those thoughts on paper, come back to them on a daily basis, and work them in, it starts to create this vivid picture in your mind of what you're trying to do. Your workout. She says, if you don't work out consistently enough, it's hard to lose weight. Yes, it's possible to lose weight through uh, diet alone. Workout is one of these tactics, I think, that's very important for us to reach the goal of the weight loss, and is specifically if you're going to try and transform. So as you think about the workout, that is one of those tactics. It's something that everybody can see that's happening. So your strategy might be to lose the weight and transform, but your workout is one of those tactical things. So think about those tactical things that people can see that you're doing and that are ultimately going to help you get closer to that goal. The next thing she mentioned is the diet. Change the way you eat is another thing that you have to commit for long-lasting weight loss. This means working to replace unhealthy foods with better choices 
and doing so most of the time. So if your diet is something that's important, but you end up in a situation where you are hungry and there are only unhealthy choices, whose fault is it for being put in that position? That's where you have to take ownership and accountability and realize that there are going to be times when it's easy to fall back in the old pattern. And as a result of that, you need to have thought ahead and strategically place those healthy options in place. It's the same thing in business. If you ha are doing a transformational you know, exercise in a company and you're trying to transform the organization, if you know there are certain routines or habits that people are going to get into, make sure that there is a path of least resistance or at least support for that other path that you're, you're choosing to go on. Your environment, sometimes you can't control the things around you. At work, you may be surrounded by many temptations. This is where she's saying, surround yourself with the things that will support you and efforts. And I think, how true is this, your environment, right? We all work within various environments. Environment's an extremely important aspect to anything we try and do. You know, where you sit, where you study, where you think, all of that has an impact on you. What about your support system? She says, well, getting healthy may be something you're doing on your own. It's big. It's a big help to have a support system, family and friends to help out. And I think that's an important step, right? Making sure you have somebody to support you along the way. Another thing she mentions here is your mental health. If you have for other reasons, you know, if you have other reasons for being overweight, maybe past hurts that you have used to deal with food, depression, or other problems, it's hard to lose weight. And I think this is important. You know, as you go into any transformation exercise, whether it's a personal transformation or business transformation, make sure that you have the right mental state of mind. She then talks a little bit about your goals. If you've set impossible goals, you're guaranteed to fail. Weight loss becomes harder to achieve if you feel like a constant failure. Nobody likes to fail. Set reasonable goals. And the same thing for a business transformation. If you're going through a business transformation and you set near impossible goals, it will most likely frustrate people. And in the case of diet, you won't stay on your diet. In the case of business transformation, you're not going to achieve that goal. Finally, she says, your unwillingness to fail. You will not be perfect every day. If you're a perfectionist, this is a frustrating concept to accept. But we can't control every aspect of life. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the top reasons why transformations fail. We'll be right back.
Hello and welcome back, everyone. You're listening to My Strategy, and I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Happy to be here. I'm glad you could join us as well. Today we've been talking about the keys to a successful transformation. We're going through why transformation is important, the reasons why it's hard, why transformations fail, and we're also giving you some tips and tricks. Would love to get your comments or thoughts on the transformation subject. Uh, you can send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com, and you'll be entered into our weekly giveaway. All right, before the break, we were talking about uh, 10 reasons why transformations were so hard in this segment. I want to talk a little bit about the top reasons why transformations fail. Sponsorships, planning, timelines, poor planning, things like that. I've got here an article that talks about the top eight reasons why transformations fail. Talks about it from a business perspective. And again, we're conflating business and personal uh, transformation at this point, but I think that uh, if from a personal perspective, if you're not in the right state of mind, number one, you're not going to be able to start a transformational exercise for any organization. Number two, if you are in a transformation, you're not going to be as in the right mindset to be able to support the transformation. So that's why we're doing that. Top eight reasons why transformations fail. I've got an article here that I am getting information from. And um, I don't have the author, but uh, okay, well, that's interesting. Um, the term transformation has demanded the corporate spotlight for years, but it is now being dissected to extract benefits while balancing cost to the business and time to implement. Despite the evolution of corporate transformation, both big and small transformations still have potential to fail. Organizations can ensure transformation success by avoiding these common pitfalls. Again, I'm reading from a blog article titled The Top 8 Reasons Why Transformations Fail. So number one, they say, is lack of executive sponsorship. A clear and unified tone at the top is imperative when driving a transformation effort to completion. Senior management buy-in affirms the transformational mandate. The use of pay for performance for programs can drive ownership at the leadership and various levels of the organization. So here we have a situation where you've got the leadership in the organization. Well, for smaller businesses or personal, it's a very flat organizational structure because you are the CEO of your own life and you are the CEO of your own small business. And as a result, there still has to be that leadership element to it. You don't get to not have that component. It means that you need to own it. Number two is poor planning. Transformational initiatives typically impact many dimensions of an organization. The process, the people, the data, technology, enablement. Implementations can get very costly, so it's important to have a detailed project plan to ensure transformation efforts stay within budget. Poor planning. How many times do we have our own transformations that we're working on and we don't have the right plan? Or maybe we have the right plan, but we are making good progress, and then for whatever reason, we decide not to continue down that plan. We don't have the, the grit, the, uh, the constitution to be able to stick with it. So not only do we not have, we, we need to have the proper plan in place, but we also need to stick with it, which means when we go outside of the plan, what are the consequences of that? Number three, lengthy timelines, and I think this is a key one, Prioritizing transformational efforts based on business value and ease of implementation and implementing quick wins with tangible results will keep employees motivated in a project with long timelines. This is a key here with transformation. As we stated earlier, transformation and change can be two different things. With transformation, it typically does take a longer time. If we think about that, you know, silkworm who's metamorphosizing into a moth or you think about any sort of transformation, weight loss, lots of weight loss, that is going to take time. It does not happen overnight. And the same thing is true for business transformation. So it means that there needs to be some sort of way to track it. Uh, in this example, they say a program management office or a transformation management office to help provide the appropriate level of governance. Well, if we're an individual, we don't have that level of governance. Who is going to fill that role or what's going to fill that role? 
Number four, they say it's an intimidating process. Announcing a full-fledged transformation can overwhelm employees and cloud their priorities. Using a precise approach aligned by process or department will allow the organization to focus. And how true is that? If you've got activities that you're doing on a daily basis, you know that they need to change, but you don't have a clarity with respect to which ones need to change and which ones you need to continue uh, using for the standard operating procedures, it makes it hard. And, and you get to a point where, what choice do I make? Not having that clarity, being intimidated is not a key to success. Number five is lack of agility. Industrial planning uh, is more important here than ever. And they need to have flexibility, though, in that approach. An organization's long-term transformation program will need to engage internal experts to understand. So what they mean here is that you need to be able to adapt to change. You need to be able to embrace it, and you need to be able to be ready to be agile, to be flexible. Number six is poor change management, and change management is the organizational change management. So from that perspective, you need the organizational change management. But also, it says here, which is very important, is the communication at all levels. Now, whether you're doing a personal change or business change, communication is fundamental. It's key. If you are not telling everybody what the message is and enforcing it, how do they know that this still is the top priority? Number seven, goals that focus on the now. A team with an end goal of reducing costs by 10% needs to, be, needs to first determine the cost of the problem. Now, this is kind of important. They say here that cost cutting by 20% may give you a short-term savings, but it can negatively impact the long term. So what are the things in our own transformational where we're looking at a tactic, something that we could do to perhaps make that change? But we always need to be thinking about the lasting and long-term impact of those short-term decisions. We call those tactics. Finally, the wrong team. While beneficial to have internal personnel invested in a transformational exercise, it is critical to fully understand the capabilities of the project team. You might not have the right players in place, and they do suggest that sometimes you need to bring in an external team to help that internal team really figure out what are the proper activities to be focusing on and which ones they should not. I mean, transformation is hard. It, we all have a situation where we can fall back into old patterns, into old habits, and as a result of that, having somebody there to guide us and coach us is always a help. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about the five must-dos for transformation. We'll be right back.
Hello and welcome back, everyone. You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Well, this week we're talking about the keys to a successful transformation. This episode, I'm talking about transformation, why transformation is important, reasons transformation is hard, why transformations fail. And I'm giving you tips and tricks to ensure that if you are going through a transformation, you can have a successful one. Now, we'd love to get your thoughts and input. Uh, later in the show, we'll be taking phone calls. Our studio number is 866-451-1451. That's 866-451-1451. Or if you prefer, you can send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. And today we're going to be giving away, uh, actually, let's do two things. One, we're giving away a copy of my book, uh, Coach to Greatness, which helps from a personal transformation perspective. But I also want to include building a strategic plan for your life and business. Uh, that will help with uh, business planning and also helping to build plans and things of that nature to support your transformation. Also, we're going to throw in a $25 Visa gift card. So if you send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com, you can be entered into our weekly giveaway. Talking about transformation right before the break, we were talking about the top reasons why transformations fail. It had to do with sponsorships, had to do with planning, timelines, not having proper goals set, things like that. This segment, I want to shift a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about the five must-dos for a successful personal transformation. As I'd mentioned, we're kind of conflating business and personal transformation. And the reason I'm doing that is because I think those two are directly connected. They are something that uh, it, it is important for you to understand from a personal perspective to do a transformation. So that when you're in an organization or part of a larger transformation initiative, you know what to expect you know that maybe the transformation isn't going to be a short-term thing. You know that there are certain things that are going to be harder to do. It is There are going to be ha patterns and habits that you're going to fall back into. In this article, it's on success.com, written by Julian Hayes. It says, a caterpillar doesn't morph into a butterfly by random chance. Nor does a personal transformation randomly occur. Instead, both scenarios happen through a series of meticulous and orderly steps over a period of time. So as you think about that, the caterpillar doesn't morph into a butterfly by random. If you're thinking that you can transform over time without thinking about the process and the steps you need to take, you will be disappointed when your transformation doesn't work because you have to think about that future state, that vision, what it is that's going to need to change for you. If you're doing something in the current state, what are you doing? And then what would it be like in the future? If you're in your career and you're in your first job and you want to grow into the future, into a you know transform into a leader or transform into another career another field something like that those are examples of transformation you've got to completely redo your skill set you've got to you know get, maintain or get a new skill set to be the leader what are the steps that you're going to take to get to become that transformational leader well it's not going to happen by happenstance you might get there if you have a mentor or coach who comes in and tells you what to do. But if you don't have somebody, what is the plan? So he suggests here that there's some things we can do. Number one, find your why. Since the beginning of time, there's something called the call to action. I don't know if it's been around since the beginning of time, but I'll go with it. Uh, he's talking about um, Luke Skywalker, who accepted his call to action and became a Jedi Knight and saved the galaxy. Richard Branson wasn't pleased with his airline experience and accepted his call to action to change the way uh, airlines treated people by launching Virgin Atlantic. Steve Jobs also embraced his call to action. 
The first step in your journey to transformation is to decide what ignites your spirits. It all comes down to finding motivation. What are you passionate about? What are you skilled at? What are the things that you have no problem doing? What are the things that when you're doing them, you're not hungry, you're not sleepy, you're excited? Those are the things you're passionate about. Those are your whys. Number two is get guidance. The author suggests that to reach our ultimate goal, we're going to need direction to avoid getting lost. Without guidance, you can be led astray and off the path and that you'll need to be that you need to be on. The one that leads to reinvention. And any setback can be demotivating. So where are you going to get that guidance? Who can help you with that guidance? Well, odds are if you find a random person to get guidance, they're not going to be, they're not going to know how to get you there. So you need to find somebody who's been there before. Number three is leave your comfort zone. To start down the path of reinventing requires leaving your comfort zone. And how true is that? If you're going to do a physical transformation or a business transformation, it means leaving the comfort zone of where you are. Get ready to leave the comfort zone. Number four is, is trust the process. Overnight stories are anything but. They only seem there only seem to be there seem to be lots and lots of overnight stories out there that we hear about, but in reality we don't hear about the years and years and years of struggle, training, preparation that those overnight successes had to do to get where they are. He suggests you trust in that process, invest in that process. Number five, he says, is Choose yourself. At the end of the day, if you don't believe in yourself, how do you expect others to believe in you? You need to be your biggest fan because if you don't value yourself to the highest degree, then who will? While pursuing your goal and attempting to transform yourself, own it and claim whatever it is you're going to go after. Do not be afraid to look bad in front of other people. The fear of failure will set you back. It's one of the biggest deterrents that we have keeping us from chasing our goals, our dreams, and ultimately getting to that success we are looking for. Choose yourself. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about ways you can create your own transformation strategy. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. You're listening to My Strategy. 
We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today and really glad that you could join us. Today we've been talking about transformation, talking about the keys to a successful transformation, about why transformation is important, how hard transformation can be. We're giving you tips and tricks to help you develop a successful transformation plan and also be a successful participant in transformation. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about creating a plan or a strategy for transformation. So to start with, I want to talk a little bit about going back to the definition of what transformation's about. I think we've gone through this pretty thoroughly. Uh, but essentially, according to the dictionary, a transformation is a thorough or dramatic change in form or appearance. Its landscape has undergone a radical transformation, change, alteration, modification, variation, conversion, revision, amendment, metamorphosis, transfiguration, evolution, mutation, sea change, and more. The example they give is a metamorphosis during the life cycle of an animal. And uh, we think about many, many different types of metamorphosis that can happen. I know, what do the crabs have to lose? Their ectoskeleton. There's also some worms that transform, or actually a caterpillar that will transform into a butterfly. I believe a worm, or a moth, a worm will transform, like a silkworm will transform into a moth. We're talking about a systematic approach, though. So how do we go about creating a systematic approach to making that happen? I've got five different steps in this systematic approach to build your strategy. So as we go through these, let's start to really think about how we can build our transformation strategy. And some of these points that I'm going to be mentioning are points that we talk about every week, but you're also going to notice that many of these points were also discussed by many of the other authors in the other segments. So I talk about awareness, assessing and analyzing the situation, strategizing and planning, implementing your planning and support and evaluation. So we're going to start with awareness. We talk about the vision, the goals. What do you want to achieve? That is all part of a transformation. You have to have a clear vision, clear goals, clear objectives defined so that as you complete those objectives and create milestones in your transformation, you're getting closer to that vision. You're starting to accomplish the goals. You're starting to get where you need to be. And that is along the path of your transformation. Whether it be a personal transformation or business, the constructs are very similar. Assess and analyze. By assessing the situation and doing some analysis, you can figure out which steps to take. Well, with respect to assessing and analyzing and transformation, from a personal transformation perspective, if we go back to the example of getting to a healthy weight, and let's say we're 50 pounds overweight, what are the things we need to have some sort of diagnosis and assessment so that we can understand exactly why we are in this situation? From that perspective, you bring in the professional, you bring in the doctor, you consult your physician, somebody who knows exactly what they're doing. And it's no different from a personal transformation that you're trying to do or something to do with a business. You need to have the professionals come in when you're in a situation. The, what they are going to provide for you, and we've done other shows on this, is perspective. Seeing the situation from another perspective can give you insight into what really is happening. So many times we're looking at a situation, we look at the situation, and we think things make sense. But when somebody comes in and looks at it from a different perspective, there's this aha moment. We might have been holding on to a belief, a value, or something that we knew to be true. We knew it. 100% knew it. I was confident that that was true. Yet, when there's another perspective that comes in, it wasn't true. That's why we want to assess and analyze. Strategize and plan. So once we've got our courses of actions identified, we can start determining the ones that will help us get to our goal. In this case, we're talking about transformation. So strategize and plan. This is kind of the fun part. What are the courses of actions that we have been doing? That's the current state, the current situation. 
what are some of the tactics that we've been using? So the courses of actions or the strategies is what we're trying to get to. The tactics, the tactics are the visible things to others that they can see. So we, what are the tactics we've been using? What are the, what's our plan? So if we are going down a certain course of actions, is that the right course of actions? With the transformation, I would say it might not be. In fact, there's a strong suggestion that your course of actions will need to change. Additionally, with transformation, your tactics will most likely 100% have to change. If you are going to go from being 50 pounds overweight to on target weight, there is something that is going to have to change dr drastically and dramatically. You cannot continue the way you're going. We also want to look at how much time do we have to invest and make sure that this plan that we put together is over time and we have realistic expectations, realistic objectives that are set. You're not going to transform overnight. It's going to take months, perhaps years to do. Finally, once we feel confident that we've got that plan in place, we need to implement the plan. Now, starting any sort of new course of actions or new tactics can be difficult to do. In the case of business transformation, it's going to seem uncomfortable. People are going to wonder why we are doing this. If you're going through a personal transformation and never darkened the doorway of a gym, that's scary. It's scary to walk up to the door, open it, See people in there who are the future state, the future vision of what you want to be. And you look at yourself, you look in the mirror, and you are not there. It's hard. That's why we need support. We need evaluation. We need somebody who can say, get us to the door, get us through the door, get us started on that plan. So that as we start to make these changes in our lives, in our business, it gives us the ability to move forward. Small successes, small wins. The more wins that you can have, the better chance of your transformation being successful because you're going to be motivated by it. You're going to be excited by it. You're going to start to want to get up and focus on this as opposed to dreading it, pushing the snooze button, staying in bed another minute or two minutes. You're going to get up before your alarm clock. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? You're listening to my strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk how, about putting your plan into place. We'll be right back.
Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Very happy to be here with you today and glad you could join us today. We've been talking about transformation. Talking about transformation, why transformation is important, reasons it's hard, why transformation fail, and giving you tips and tricks on how to plan for a successful transformation. You do have a few more minutes uh, to get in your submissions to enter to win our giveaway for this week, which is a copy of, uh, well, you're going to get two cop, two books. You're going to get Coach to Greatness and also Building a Strategic Plan for Your Life and Business. Those are two of my books. You're also going to get a $25 Visa gift card, so you need to get that in now. Uh, send it to talk at johnmhawkins.com. And in case you missed this broadcast, uh, you can listen to it on iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes. And uh, if you'd like to have something covered, uh, send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com or give us a call at 1-844-MY-STRATEGY. So we've been talking today about transformation. Why do we want to transform? And I think, you know, something that, you know, came to mind here is what is the definition of transformation? And we learned that transformation is not just change. So change and transformation are not synonymous. Not all changes are transformative in nature. And as I've talked before, some lots of change can turn into chaos. So there's a fine line between having enough change to get us to transform and having too much change, which can lead to transformations. So we're talking a lot about how we need to really have a good, clear vision of our future state. But not only a good, clear vision of our future state, but we need to have a realistic view of our current state. And building that vision, that view, is very important to do. Once we've done it and got the technical bits and pieces identified of what we need to do to do our transformation, it's important to have purpose, tenacity, develop a culture, have leadership's participation. In personal transformation, uh, you are the leader, so you need to own it. In a business, we need to make sure leadership is involved. But transformation is not necessarily easy. In fact, it can be hard. We talked a lot about diet and exercise, but not just diet and exercise, but transformative change with regard to weight. Large weight losses, like 25, 50 pounds, those are transformative in nature. Diet and maintaining, really, there's an argument to say it is not a transformative change. But there's a lot of things you need to be thinking about to be able to support it. Those are very similar to the types of things you're going to need to be focusing on for a business change. We then talked a little bit about why transformations fail. They fail because of lack of sponsorship, lack of planning, timelines. If you're on a diet, you don't have the right meal plan, and you're out, and there's nothing but the wrong choice, either you don't eat or you make the wrong choice. So it means you need to be putting options, healthy options out there to be able to give you the right choice. So you make the right choice when you have the healthy option. Same thing with business transformation. Consultants, people can help you so that as your people are working through a transformation, they have somebody who can guide them, help them make the right choice, make sure they have those things in place that they need. We then talked about the five must-dos for transformation, which include things like find your why, the passion, getting guidance, being comfortable is not always an option. You have to be ready to leave your comfort zone. We talked a little bit about creating your strategy and getting you to a point where you can get from that current state to the future state. But I can tell you that it's not really that easy. Breaking of habits is hard. We need to be aware of those patterns. We need to start thinking about, you know, how can we go about breaking those habits? And it all comes down to being able to consciously prioritize and commit to your goals and intentions. And with that, my friends, you will have a successful transformation. It's been a pleasure being with you here today. You've been listening to my strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network. We'll see you next time.